Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd from Halo RV down at Jayco RV on site today. We're going to be taking a pass through the Jayfeather and the White Hawk production facilities. Now, um, Jayco's lightweights are all kind of managed under one division, and they are actually built the Jayfeathers and the White Hawks in two separate facilities. They each have their own build production facility. This one video, we're going to kind of jump between the two. Okay, so I'm actually getting here quite late. I believe the production line actually ended a couple hours ago. And they've, uh, the Jay Feather plant looks like they've already kind of closed up shop for the day, but I think I'm still going to be able to kick in the door and get you through White Hawk. And again, the, the construction process is basically the same. There's only two structural differences between the two of them, and I'm going to point those out as we go. How you doing, man? Pretty good. Because effectively, the physical construction is essentially the same. The biggest difference when you go from a Feather to a White Hawk is what you might call the trim package. And if you're a little more curious as to some of those specific details, I have a link in the video description where it really compares Jay Feather to White Hawk and showing you what you get when you step up from a Feather to the White Hawk. But today, I wanna to get to show you how they're put together because we can look at this final product all day and love it. But sometimes you wanna know a little bit more about how it goes together. And if you appreciate the extra time and effort that we take to to leave the dealership to come out down here and do this because I have been recording all day today. And in the meantime, I had a whole mess of stuff come in at the store. I have, I've, I've created a big old mess for myself here, but I couldn't wait to get, I, I had to get you this footage. Hit that subscribe button to let me know you appreciate it and leave us some comments as you go. Let us know what kind of things that you liked that you saw, that you learned, any questions you might have or any concerns you might have so that maybe we can fill in some blanks for you. Now, kind of like we just saw there, we might see a couple of the laborers still uh, cruising around here. What they do is, they, they get the line to certain stop points at the end of the day so that the next person who comes in the next morning, they always know where to pick up and start the day. So there's no guessing like, did we miss something? Did we forget to put anything together? Um, you, you might see a person running around the background a little bit, might hear a little bit of background noise. We are in an active working facility. We are a little bit after hours, but uh, part of the reason I come here a little bit later is one, so you know I can talk and you can hear me over the, the air tools that go crazy because it gets loud in these places. But secondly, a lot of the Amish staff that uh, um, you know occupy the labor force in uh, this area, they don't like their, their face captured on camera, video, pictures, whatever. So coming later like this is one of the few ways that I can get you this footage, still give you an up close and personal view of these things coming together while still respecting the labor staff down here. Now, as is usually the case, we start with the, the chassis, the foundation, kind of like a house. You don't start with the attic, you know, <laughs> not going to get you real far. One of the interesting things I always like to showcase here, though, is um, two points of interest, I think, with the slide system. When you're looking at a super slide, uh, a slide out that actually it's called a through frame slide because it actually goes through the frame, you know, not real complicated there. First of all, it comes installed on the, on the chassis itself because that's the same company effectively. Secondly, Jayco mounts their motors on the inside of the underbelly to help keep them protected from exterior weathering and rocks and stuff. A lot of manufacturers do that. Not every manufacturer does that. Once we start getting the underbelly in close, you see where it gets all nice and protected in there. Now, in case you're curious, these funny little triangle jobs that are sticking out right here, these are called outriggers. Uh, these are what are directly below the wall. And you see all these little screws here. The It actually screws up through the floor into the wall to help hold everything together. So it's, uh, you know, supported vertically. They're not installing the walls sideways into the floor which is a potential hiccup point that you might run into sometimes on a 100 inch wide body product. If they don't use a wide body chassis or extended outriggers, there's less support on those sidewalls, which could theoretically cause some structural issues long term. Of course, not while it's under warranty. Now this is our flooring jig over here, and this is an active facility. It is just after hours, so I was not able to capture a floor coming together for you. Would have really liked to do a cool little time lapse on something like that. Would have been awesome. I'd have overlaid some danger zone on it, probably, you know, had a copyright infringement strike, but neither here nor there. Um, one quick note, one of only two areas where Jay Feather and White Hawk construction significantly differs is just the floor. A Jay Feather is what I call a true lightweight. It is uh, more focused on weight and it's not so over the top on a lot of the features. It uses a lighter weight laminated floor. Big Brother White Hawk does not do that. They use a constructed floor like a J-Flight, like an Eagle, like a North Point or a Pinnacle because their models tend to be bigger, heavier, and they want all the strength they can possibly get. So they do a bigger, stronger floor here. They figure a feather's smaller and lighter. They don't have that issue. And from everything that I've seen from their engineering, it really seems to hold up. You might notice too, they're using 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor decking here. Uh, also, 
where you, uh, you you may notice everything is screwed. I mean, there's a lot of fasteners holding this all together, especially along the seams, so you don't get that squeak, 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 squeak. That's another thing plywood tends not to do is squeak so much, especially when they keep it fastened down. With the flooring on, they flipped the script and actually literally flipped the whole darn thing upside down because it's a heck of a lot easier to run wiring, run plumbing, run heating. Um, and that's what we're looking at here. The whole the uh, holding tanks are installed. The sewer stuff is installed. It's always kind of funny when it's upside down. Anytime I'm on a video tour, or not a video tour, a uh, product tour like this, a factory tour with lots of other people, there's always someone that says they put the sewer on the wrong side. No, it's flipped. Keep in mind. <laughs> um, one other thing I like to show you here is uh, the, I showed you on the chassis how the slide motor for a super slide is on the inside of the chassis rails. Well, they also include a handy little framework here and they will give you an access panel to be able to get to that. Now, slide motor failures, things like that in the RV industry are thankfully exceptionally uncommon, but even more uncommon is a manufacturer giving you or a service center the way to be able to get to and um, fix those things should the very rare need arise uh, from the factory level like that. A lot of times, the only thing that a dealer of any kind or a service center could do is take a shop razor and cut your underbelly and then duct tape it back up in place like Cousin Ricky fixing his old Studebaker or whatever. Now, something else we're not really seeing since we're not in active production is that big roll of corrugated underbelly material. They do a cool thing at Jayco's here. They don't have a name for it. I call it the J-Shield, and I'm going to zoom you in a little bit over there. You see that extra lip hanging down below that chassis rail? That is actually a neat little channel. The underbelly skin uh, basically slots into that C-channel. They mount it under the lip of the I-beam so that there's no little areas where this can drop down and gap and sag and, uh, you know, cause like a little mouse house. It appears it is closing time. The lights are turning off. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're literally going home. They showed me where the lights are so I can shut the lights off when I'm done. Burning the midnight oil here for you. <laughs> And it's kind of crazy. You go from like nothing to boom, tough acting to acting all of a sudden. Like there, all of a sudden there's just a ton of stuff going on over here real quick. And it's kind of funny. That's how this is sort of going to work a couple times. You're going to like see a huge influx of very visible big impact stuff. And then for like 10 workstations, you don't really see a whole lot. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, look at that. And where this is all coming from is from up here in the loft area. The cabinet shop is actually above the rest of the facility. And what they do is all, all the jigs, all the work tables are uh, up there and they pre-stage all this stuff. Like, uh, it's kind of interesting. It all comes together from the inside out. And if you've seen some of my other video tours, you see this is normal towable RV construction. It's like the opposite order of what you would see and imagine from a house. Like. The interior wiring and walls and plumbing go up and then the exterior stuff happens. Like up here, this is a bed deck that we're looking at. These are your side stands. This is your pass through. These are your overhead cabinets. Those have to get mounted to the wall. So they're just kind of brought inside now. It's easier to already have them in there when the walls go up rather than haul them inside, obviously. This is also a much, much easier time to start running things like wiring and plumbing. And what you're going to see as we go is you will see sometimes there will be like a, a, you know, an eight inch, nine inch chunk of like little wiring on the floor. That's because that's where they had some excess after they pulled it through to wire up, say like a light fixture or something like that, clip that off. Then at the next station or potentially even at the very same station that gets cleaned up before it moves on. So Jayco has one centralized lamination facility where they do all of their vacuum laminating. That's where all this stuff comes in from. And what they do, you see how there's like multiple uh, walls that are exactly the same in one spot. Manufacturers like to batch build things. You get quality through repetition. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's easier to plan, it's easier to schedule, it's easier to buy the right number of parts, and it's easier for the workers to remember exactly which model they're working on. Not every factory historically has worked like that. I will absolutely tell you most do, uh, but it's, you know, not 100% guarantee necessarily across the board out there. Now, uh, as you're looking here, you see the, the walls come up, and then very quickly, it very much starts to take shape of what you've seen, but you're getting a really good look here at uh, part of the uh, thermal barrier that you see on this product. White Hawks are very good that way. Again, with that climate shield uh, process, they have extra insulation in the ceiling. Uh, they have the radiant barrier down the nose. It's uh, in the slide floor. You've got that heated and closed belly. This is a zero to 100 degree tested and proven product, every single floor plan. 
That is another difference between what Jayco does and what some, not all, manufacturers do. They're not the only ones that necessarily do this, but there are a large number of manufacturers who will take one floor plan from their lineup, test it, and say, well, yeah, if that passes, then the other ones probably will too. And they put that sticker on the side of the camper that has, let's see, the sun, the leaf, the, uh, the, the snow, and the rain, and they say, look, we're four seasons. Jayco tests every single floor plan individually to verify. It looks like we're going to be seeing a bunch of 26 RKs today, which is, uh, I like this floor plan. It's very cool. It's actually very interesting to get to see it all wide open and exposed like this. That's why I wanted you guys to get to see this stuff. Now, down here, you see that wide stance stability axle system. That is, again, one of those variances between a Jay Feather and a White Hawk. With the White Hawks being longer, they have that really dramatically spread axle system to help give you better towing stability where that, that the shorter feathers necessarily just don't need. Now, while we're looking at this thing all uh, in its glory and exposed, you know, it, it's sort of like when you catch somebody stepping out of the shower. It's like, oh, that's not how you're expecting me to see you, is it? <laughs> um... But this floor plan is very cool. Like uh, where I'm standing right now is roughly the position of the super slide where you'd see like a theater seat and a booth or something like that, or a sofa and a booth straight across from the entertainment center with a fireplace below. The camp kitchen we just got done looking at is behind that on the trailer that's currently behind us. What do you guys think about the option of getting these built with no camp kitchen, no fireplace, and just a big open desk right there giving us uh, like a, a very cool little 26 foot trailer, well, 26 foot floor plan with a mobile workstation. What do you think about an idea like that? Now, after the walls go up, once again, very quickly, you see the whole thing kind of develop. And that is where at a second different loft location, you have the roof shop effectively. And now oh, this is the only other significant area where white hawks and jay feathers vary. They both have a constructed roof. That's where you use Jayco's Magnum Truss roof system like we're looking at right here, which has the heaviest roof load rating of anybody else in this class. They have plywood decking uh, that we'll get to see in a minute, and there's no one else in this class that's ever claimed or even tried to claim that they hold more weight than this. Now, you could argue that something like a 42 to 4,800 pound rated roof is overbuilt, but I think there's a lot of people who are looking for the last RV they ever want to own who are going to argue there is no such thing as overbuilt. But the big difference here is that White Hawk roofing, it's not that that is sagging. Like, it, it, if it, just from this camera angle, it kind of makes it look like uh, something's wrong here and it's sagging in the back. White Hawks are a double vaulted roof. They are vaulted inside and out. And when I get down here, you can see that a little bit. One of the things that's kind of cool about that is it does provide a little bit more even insulation the whole way through. The other thing is that when you're inside of the RV, that vaulted roof line, you're not really getting the dramatic effect of it here. It makes it look and feel so, so much bigger there. So the roof goes on all as one piece. Pretty much all of the Jayco towable divisions build their roofing in one section like that and then hoist it into place. It allows them to be up close, more personal with their work and do a better job, make sure all the fasteners and everything are exactly where they're supposed to be. That's how a lot of big motorhomes do things in a bigger facility. Some other towable brands do that, not all do that. And Jayco's very consistent. If you watch some of my other factory tours, you're going to see that Jayco tends to do that uh, pretty much across the board. Now, this right here, that's that double-sided uh, radiant barrier material that we kind of briefly mentioned previously. They will roll that, well, first of all, there will be uh, standard insulation, like residential batten insulation put um, between all of the studs in the roofing. And look at that, guys. We got a fan here, big fan. How you doing? Appreciate that. Appreciate my fans. <laughs> so stupid. But they, you've got the batten insulation across the roof, then a uh, radiant barrier layer, and then the plywood decking comes down. And there's an interesting extra thing they do here that I actually don't see done at even the other Jayco plants. It's interesting to me that they're doing that here on Jay Feather and Whitehawk. Those black strips, it's quite literally duct tape. They're doing that to put a smooth edge where sheets of wood might meet so that you don't have a sharp point potentially rubbing on the inside of your roofing. It's actually really smart. What a lot of other uh, Jayco plants do is they take like a, a grinder and grind that stuff down. It's interesting to me here that they just found a different way to do it within the Jayco family. I don't think it's better. I don't think it's inferior. I think they just found a different way to skin a cat basically. 
Now from here, like the next multiple stations, you don't like visibly see a huge difference, but at every station, there's specific things that take place. Like here, you see they're doing uh, like uh, marker lights, clearance lights, the backup camera. They're doing um, the, the slide wiper seals, getting those kind of things prepped and in place. They're prepping interior wiring for the next stage. And at a glance, station by station, I'm not gonna bore you with that level of minutia, like you, you don't see a whole lot happening. Then all of a sudden, once again, there's that big boom point where all of a sudden a bunch of stuff starts happening. We've got nose caps and baggage doors and everything starts to really look the part. Like you can really start to see it coming together now, can't you? One thing that hasn't really major happened yet other than windows. I mean, obviously there's still some things to be done out here though, is a slide out. And this is one of the things I really like showing. You get to see how the slide out is just like a miniature version of the trailer into which it is installed. You may have noticed how even the rear wall of a White Hawk is laminated. But uh, something here is you notice how Jayco also laminates their slide end walls on their laminated products. So the body of the slide uh, basically matches that of the RV into which it's installed. They're very consistent that way. It makes sense. The engineering works in one area, why not the other? One of the other things I like to show you here, uh, well, first of all, you can see how uh, all Jayco laminated products, by the way, none of them have uh, flooring, or flooring, I am tired, it's the end of the day, I'm out of caffeine, I'm out of steam, I've walked a lot, got my steps in, have carpeting in the slide floors. But you might notice that right there. Jayco is really known for using a lot of plywood and not OSB, so I like to take some time to show you that P-Max flooring. It is one of the only areas they use uh, OSB and it's intentionally used because it's not just a sheet of OSB. It is a big, like, purpose-built, formed molded kind of product effectively where it actually is a thicker heavier stronger floor it weighs more and it costs more but it's stronger so that long term if you're standing in this slide you're seven eight and nine it doesn't start to get you know weak and sag on you one of the other things i like to show you here is this is an aluminum um framed product but where they have to really bolt into it and, and you know, uh, put a lot of stress on that, they don't want to crush the aluminum tubing. So they will actually stuff those critical stress points with wood to really give uh, screws something to bite into to avoid crushing those tubes. It's a really smart thing. And then all of a sudden we hit another one of those major shift points where we go, okay, so it kind of looks the part to all of a sudden, oh, the slide is in, the windows are in, and the decals uh, are almost all in place. And from here, I mean, it really starts to look like a completed White Hawk. A lot of the work from here starts happening inside. Also looks like we've changed from the 26RK to the 29BH right here. But the same process is going to apply. Uh, the, the furniture that Jayco builds, they actually build inside of the slide out, like that dinette. The furniture that they buy, like a sofa, actually comes in later. So if you're ever curious, can the sofa fit through the door? Yes, the sofa fits through the door when it's built. The sofa is not placed and then everything built around it. Now, you don't see things like slide out fascia in play yet. That stuff all comes in play later. First, they got to get the slide in, then they have to make it look pretty effectively. Also, man, what a good way to get to see some of the construction that goes into the bunk here. The better materials, the, the plywood construction that goes into this, it, you know, when it's all finished off and pretty, it, in a sense, it's almost a disservice to a customer because you can't see it. But I mean, obviously, you, you know, you don't want a uh, <laughs> exposed construction bunk system by any means of, you know, do you? Now, five or six stations later, once again, from the outside, they're still doing some things like putting in some wiring. You don't see an awning on it yet. That's what that wire is kind of hanging from the roof line right there. But where we start seeing things happening from here is once a lot of that internal wiring stuff is done, uh, they start bringing in a lot of the furniture, which is what you're seeing here. Furniture, soft goods, the uh, dining tables, sofas, things like that start coming inside here. And... I was lucky enough, or they were kind enough, they left one powered up for me so we can actually look around in here. I call that lightsaber lighting, by the way, that blue glow beam on the nose. It's just like... <laughs> ah! That's not true! That's impossible! Thank you. Thank you. So we go from no awning, <laughs> almost no furniture, 
to suddenly whoosh, things start really taking shape once again. You start seeing the camp kitchens get fleshed out, the furnaces, the water heaters are getting installed at this stage, and you can see how there's uh, a lot more progress done in here. You can see where they're bringing in the furniture. Once again, that was not there a minute ago, so that has to fit through the door. It's not like they took the slide out, out and then put that back in. We're seeing appliances come through. Something else that you might notice a couple times, you'll see various uh, strips of tape. These are active quality control measures uh, through the production line. They're actively quality controlling here. And sometimes I like, there's a, this means something. I, I don't see a pro, I can't see a defect. So sometimes they are just, they're, they're very detailed. They're very over the top specific about things. And uh, like you look around, you might see, you know, two or three pieces, but a lot of times I can't really see whatever they saw or maybe thought they saw. And typically, when things come in from Halid RV, Jayco's actually one of the brands that has some of the cleanest cabinetry fit and finish. So what are, they're obviously just over hyper paranoid because very rarely do we ever have to do anything on these when they come into our store. We got things like the bunk mattresses going in, some fit and finish. You see that ladder come on. They've, uh, you know, they've kind of cleaned up the facing of the bunks. And it's crazy how just a few minutes ago, if even that, we were in the very basic raw construction stage of this and how quickly it's already taken shape. Now this one here doesn't have the lights on. I'm the only guy here, so I don't know who to bother to try to get the lights turned on. But only one station later, it's a, it's it's crazy how it looks almost complete that quickly. And that's what I was saying is like you go through each of these individual stations, and sometimes you don't like you're like, what do they? What does this person even do? Like there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes, and then all of a sudden, all at once. Bam! Everything comes together. Those bunk mattresses get in place, those curtains go up, and you really see it happening. Now, as we approach the end of the production line here, one thing I want to point out, and it sounds bad at first, but hear me out. Jayco does not have a facility where they do 100% PDIs on every single unit. That's because every single facility does 100% PDIs on every unit. You see how that is plugged in right there? We got lucky a couple of these were powered up uh, back here uh, behind me. Well, every single Jayco production facility, a common practice at this company is that as they're rolling down the line, they're uh, checking the water system, you know, the pumps, the holding tanks, the pipes, they pressurize the LP system. Uh, they're doing a gas drop test. They're checking all the electrical. They make sure that everything works before it's released to the shipping uh, company. Now, Sometimes shipping can be a violent experience. Sometimes things wiggle loose. You might have seen how we uh, proactively quality control everything at Haylet RV on arrival. And it's rare, but yeah, sometimes we do find where, oh, hey, this we need to fix this stereo or something's not working here or something wiggle loose. Nine times out of ten, it's something extremely small, just a quick wiggle that we can fix. It's rarely a major item. And that's because they have proactively addressed a lot of this. And one of the things that I like about that is instead of, um, some companies will, they really brag about how we have a, a separate 100% PDI facility, every single thing we build. And that's cool. I'm really glad that they do that. But what if the person down here on the production line is making a mistake? Well, it, it gets harder to relay that information to, to tell that person to stop making that mistake. When it all happens in here, they can catch more of that on the fly and prevent more of that from happening actively. Proactive, not reactive quality control. I'll take proactive any day. And the final station here, we have a fully completed product. And obviously, you can totally tell it's taken form. We're also getting a good look at a Nissan forklift. How you doing there, Mr. Tow Motor? <laughs> That's actually, if you notice, this is what they use to get it pulled out into the yard. A special little hitching system that they've come up with. They're kind of ingenious, really. Um, inside, what you're going to see, the little things that I notice, the, the complete, the wholesome, the good caring feelings, like, you know, a, a full bedding complement in here. Not just a little sheet thrown across the bed, but a couple little pillows. And yeah, I get it. You're probably going to replace those. But it's that thought, that fulfillment, that, you know, total package feeling that they're giving here that I really like on these. Um, as we go up the stairs, by the way, if you're not familiar with it, there's also the new J-Port thing. This is a uh, exclusive thing coming out on a lot of Jayco's. It's basically just a two-inch receiver hitch off the side of the camper. But what it can do is it can be a mount for a Blackstone griddle, which is exclusive to Jayco at this time. I guarantee you everybody else is going to jump on that bandwagon as soon as they can. Um, it also can be used for things like there's outdoor tables, all kinds of things. 
But this station specifically goes through and just does a once over final pass. And I saw a little thing here that, again, I think really kind of, it tells the story of the care and concern that comes from this facility and the people that work here. Not just the fact that they go through and clean it, which, I mean, reasonably, I think any any factory should. But putting that little carpet square under there, you know, you got a whole bunch of wa chemicals, water, wet stuff all over the place here. Making sure that that's not getting on the dinette, cushions, you know, leaving ugly marks, causing, uh, you know, unsightly things. Just the little care and concern details like that to go in here. I don't always see that in every factory that I go through. But what's interesting is I do see it every time I go through any Jayco production facility. And I think it just says a lot about the men and women that work here and the pride they take in their work and uh, just the, the final product and how it's all focused on you, uh, on mom and dad and the kids and the family. It's not just a camper. It's not just a wall. It's not just a light that I install. It's the total package. I wasn't joking. They literally asked me to shut the lights off when I was done here. And I tell you what, there's gotta be a better way. There's like 40,000 million billion light switches in this place, but then again, I suppose it is a pretty big facility. Almost kind of seems like, I don't know, you would uh, have more of them just on one switch rather than hitting these master breakers every day, but hey, get all these turned off. Thank Jayco, by the way, for letting me stay over and uh, do all this. Tell you what, it's a little, a little creepy, a little spooky in these places without the, the lights on. Did you hear that? If you stayed here to kill me, clap your hands. No, 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 no. no. All right. I think we lost. So, I was hoping to get a better look at Jay, uh, Jay Feather production today, but again, they're pretty much the exact same thing other than the floor and the roof and the spread axles. The construction is exactly the same. It just boils down to trim packages. So if you wanna see the differences between, what are those equipment differences between a Jay Feather and a White Hawk, check the link in the video description where I've got a full video detailing just that for you to help you kind of bridge the gap a little bit. And again, if you see something you like, or you learn something, let us know that. If you have any questions or concerns about anything you've seen today, please leave me a comment and I'll do my best to kind of explain or shed some light or acknowledge that maybe there's something wacky or weird. I don't know, whatever the case may be. I always try to be fair. I never try to duck hard stuff and I always do my best uh, to, to fill in the blanks. And just like today, getting away from the dealership and coming down here to get you all this extra information, I don't see anybody else doing it. If you appreciate the effort, hit the subscribe button. Give our family-owned and operated team a call when you're ready. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy hail at camping, everyone. Hey, hon. Yeah. Yeah, I'm done down here. No, I'm just going to stop get a bite to eat on the way home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know we're eating healthy. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a salad but he did not get a salad. No worries. Stuff you find on the way home. Look at this place, fireworks. Yeah, right. That's a good place to get kidnapped and murdered. That's the place where they find the body.